Number 29, a certain elevator cab has a total run of 190 meters and a maximum speed of 305 meters per minute. And it accelerates from rest and then back to rest at 1.22 meters per second square. So we have an elevator cab over here. And then the maximum run is 190 meters. We also have that the maximum speed is equal to 305 meters per minute, which is equal to 5.08 meters per second. You just have to divide it by 60. We also have that, that the acceleration is equal to 1.22 meters per second squared. So this is the acceleration over here. However, the acceleration can be either positive or negative. It depends. In the first part of the movement, the acceleration is positive since you, the, the speed is increasing. But in the last part in, of the movement, the elevator has to stop. So the, the, the speed decreases and the acceleration is negative. So this can be plus 1.22 or minus 1.22. Or it can be zero in, in the middle part when the, the, the elevator is not accelerating accelerating or is slowing down, right? So letter A, how far does the cab move while accelerating to full speed from rest? So if it starts from rest, the initial speed is zero. The final speed is the maximum speed over here, which is 5.08. And since the speed is increasing, we have that the acceleration is plus 1.22 meters per second square. So those are the informations that we have over here. And what we want to know, we want to know delta x. This is what we want to know. This is what letter A is asking us to calculate. So this is an exercise of constant acceleration. And if the acceleration is constant, there are three different equations that we can use, which are x equal to x0 plus v0t plus at squared over 2, v equals to v0 plus at, and v squared equals to v0 squared plus 2 times a delta x. So those are the three equations that you can use. Let's see which one we will use to find delta x. So let's go to the right one right away, but you can do the same analysis for for each equation so we know final v we know initial v we know acceleration and we don't know delta x so it's obvious that we can use this equation to find delta x so v square equals to v zero square plus two times a times delta x isolating delta x delta x equal to v square minus v zero square over two a and this will be, let's just replace the variables by the numbers. And then we have 5.08 squared minus 0 over 2 times 1.22. And this is equal to roughly 10.6 meters. So this is the answer of letter A. Letter B. How long does it take to make a non-stop 190 meter run starting and ending at rest? So we have three different movements here. We have the first part of the movement, which is, uh, we, which is what we made at letter A. The elevator accelerates from, from rest. So this is the first part. So let's say that letter A is the orange part. The second part is when the, the maximum speed is already achieved and then the elevator just keeps its velocity constant. And the final part is when the, the, the elevator has to slow down, right? So there, there, there are three different parts of this movement. And our strategy here is to calculate the time for the first part, the time for the second part, and the time for the third part. And then we just sum everything up and that's it we find letter b answer so let's just go to the first part the orange part we we will use this equation over here because we know the final speed the initial speed and the acceleration we just don't know delta t 
So for the first part of the movement, we have the V equals to V0 plus AT. So T equals to V minus V0 over A. And this is equal to 5.08 minus 0 over 1.22. And this is equal to 4.17 seconds. So the first part of the movement took 4.17 seconds. Let's go to the last part of the movement because it's easier than the second part. The last part of the movement, we, we will use exactly the same equation. So we have that T equals to V minus initial V over A, which is uh, the, the final velocity in this case is zero. The initial is 5.08. And the acceleration in this case is negative minus 1.22. And then we find exactly the same answer, 4.17 seconds. So the first part of the movement, the elevator took 4.17 seconds. In the last part, it took 4.17 seconds as well. We just have to calculate this, this purple part in the middle. However, we cannot use this equation over here because the, the, the initial and the final velocity is the same. The acceleration is zero, so we cannot find t using this equation we have to use this equation over here the first equation so let's write it down we have that x equals to x0 plus v0t plus a t squared over 2 however the second part in the second part the acceleration is zero so we can cross out this part the the, the, the final part over here let's move x0 to the left and then we have delta x equal to v zero t we want to find out t so let's isolate it and then we have t equals to delta x over v zero this v zero over here is the maximum velocity is this one over here because the elevator starts from rest gets this velocity here and then keeps the velocity constant so this is the this velocity over here but we need to know delta x, how far the elevator moved in the second part of the movement. What would be our strategy here? We will calculate the, the, the path travel in the first part of the movement. We already done that. This is 10.6 meters. This, the last part of the movement, we can do the, the same calculation and calculate it here. And then we just do 190 minus this part minus this part and then we find this part over here this is our strategy here to calculate delta x so let's calculate the blue delta x and we will use exactly the same equations in letter a so what we have here we have the delta x equals to v square minus v zero square over two times a and in this case the final velocity is zero. The initial velocity is 5.08. And then the acceleration is minus 1.22. And this is exactly the same answer as in part one, which is 10.6 meters. So the elevator cab traveled 10.6 meters in part one, 10.6 meters in part two and in part three it's just 190 minus 10.6 minus 10.6 right pretty simple and this is equal to 168.8 meters so let's just replace it over here and then we get 168.8.8 over the, the velocity which is constant 5.08 and then we get uh, roughly 33.2 seconds so if we sum everything up we sum uh, 4.17 plus 4.17 plus 33 Point 0.2 seconds we can find that delta t is equal to 41.5 seconds and this is the answer of this exercise over here